So the first diagram we're going to look at is the context diagram. In the context diagram there are only three symbols. We have a circle to indicate our system, we have a rectangle to indicate our external entity and an arrow to indicate our data flow. So when we think about a context diagram all we're really mapping is the data that moves from our external entities into our system and from our system to our external entities. So let's think about our external entities as people or other systems. Okay, and let's do an example. If we say, think about the garage door system. Whenever we're drawing a context diagram, we should always start by drawing our large circle using the name of the item and then always putting the word system at the end. Now when I think about the garage door system, I'm thinking about the roller shutter that goes up and down that's controlled by a remote. So who interacts with the garage door system? The only person I can think of would be the user. So we put the user in the external entity box. Now we need to work out what data is sent from the user to the garage door system. Let's call it a request. That might be a request to open the door or to shut the door. It doesn't really matter in this case. And does the system ever send any message back to the user? Um, I suppose in some cases the user might see the door opening or alternatively we might get a flash on our remote. Let's say a notification is sent back to indicate that something has happened. Notice that everywhere I put a data flow I've written the data that's going to be transferred on that arrow. And that's a context diagram. Let's do another question. In our second question, you are going to do a context diagram for the library borrowing system. Let's see how you go. Well, this borrowing system could get extremely complex or could be extremely simple. But let's start with what we know. We're always going to put our system down first. And a system always goes in a circle. The next thing is who, people or systems, are going to provide data to our library borrowing system. So the librarian probably provides some data to the system and obviously I'm going to say the borrower. Now if I liked at this point in time I could add publishers adding book information but let's keep it simple. So what data does the borrower bring to this system? They bring their name, their address, probably their borrower number. What would they get back once they've finished with the borrowing system? Well normally they get back a paper receipt. But remember, these arrows only mark absolute data. So we can't put a receipt down. I know, what we'll put down is we'll put down date due for whatever item they've borrowed. They might even get back the book name. Okay, so what type of data goes to and from the librarian? Well, the librarian is going to get back lots of reports. And these reports can be about borrowing, overdue books, maybe new purchases. 
and the librarian is going to add to this system all the information about the books and items to borrow. So, the name, the publishing date, the publisher, you get the drift. And there's our library borrowing system. And finally, let's do one more example. But this one will let you solve yourself. Example three. Let's do hmm. let's do an ATM. So, if you follow the rules we've already stated, you're going to first draw a big circle and write ATM system. You then need to work out who's going to interact with the ATM system. Might be banks or users. Could be the federal government, if there's some tax involved, or the tax office. And then once you've got your circle, and your external entities drawn, you need to connect them with data flows and tell me what information is moving between the external entity and the system or between the system and the external entity.